Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. Uh, this is the music technology. This is uh, Mr. Okay. Herbert Mitchell. Uh, for more than 17 years, Herbert has been working closely with the media technology. He is an expert of computers and music software, and has served many students and faculty with the use of music technology. Herbert is currently a music technology coordinator at Student at Austin State University. He also teaches guitar and electronic music, music for children, and history of rock music. He also has many educational and music videos on the web. Uh, let's welcome uh, Mr. Hector, uh, Herb. I'm going to say Hector. Uh, right. Herb, literally. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all for coming out. Can you all hear me okay right now? Great. Uh, I know it's 6.30 is kind of a late time. Can you all come out and whatnot? And I've done this, I think this is the fourth time I've taught uh, session, taught this particular session. I teach it a little bit different every time because of the technologies uh, that are out here and whatnot. So I do have a PowerPoint presentation. However, what I think I'm going to do is just dive into the programs and have you guys ask questions and then we'll just take it from that point. Uh, take that off. Take, uh, that usually works better. So I'm just going to close my PowerPoint presentation because I don't think I actually need it. Uh, before we get started, how many folks are out there or elementary? Oh, great. Uh, high school level and college. Great. The thing about music technology is that this little box up here has just changed what we're able to do in so many ways. And you feel, it's, it's kind, of, kind of getting to a point that you just feel weird without having access to the internet now, having access to cell phones. Uh, I, I went to seven sessions yesterday, I went to five today. And there's always somebody doing this right back there, doing text messaging somebody and whatnot. And when I came here, when I first started coming here in 98, uh, no one had cell phones. So the day was a backbone. So it's amazing how fast technology has gone by. I taught in public schools for a while, and I realized that you, know, you just don't have a budget. And, and a lot of you guys are right here. So the programs I'm going to show to you guys are free programs that work both on the Mac and PC. And there are there are other programs that you can purchase that cost that cost various amounts from you know thirty bucks to you know five hundred dollar range. Uh, however, most of the ones I, I, I'm going to show you here, well, really all the ones I'm showing you here, twenty years ago would have been like incredible. I would have loved to have some of these programs, especially like Notepad, which I'm going to talk about. It when I was in high school, I would have loved to have Notepad. See this little nerve right here? My hands just start dropping because I used to handwrite the parts out. And it just and thankfully I don't have to do that anymore. Well, the first program I want to show you guys uh, is Audacity. And what Audacity is, is a music uh, recording piece of software. So first I'm just going to show you how to basically play music. It's still a good person. You know, if the technology falls apart, it'll be right now. While I was doing that, I'll show you this cool little mic. I was going to show this a little later on. This is actually a USB microphone. So you see this little USB wire on it? It's a big condenser microphone. And they're about $80 in range. This is a Samsung, and it's a CO1U USB studio condenser. And it's actually a pretty good mic. Most of you guys, I'm assuming, are PC probably, right? And so, since you guys are all PC, you probably will have a sound card that will have a place for an input jack for a microphone. So if you go to, to Walmart or wherever and then just buy a $10 microphone, you can use that to start recording. Now, of course, the better the microphone, the better the microphone, the, the better quality of recording that you're going to get. You know, you can do it all the time. And this is not like Uh, it's a Samsung uh, CEO 1U USB uh, studio in this room. It's already running. Well, I was hoping to have all this stuff open up before, uh, before y'all came in here. Uh, <coughs> sadly, uh, the last group took a little while to get up. Okay, let's force quit that. 
So are you saying it doesn't work with the mind? No, it's not perfect. I, I, use it, I use it all the time. I use this list as well. There it is. Beautiful thing about uh, programs you just restart them a lot of times they work. There are other programs out there that cost a great deal of money. Uh, Soundforge, which some of you guys may use. Uh, there's, a, there's a bunch of different uh, various audio programs. I like Audacity because it works both with Mac, PC, and Linux. And it, the nice thing is that you can transfer files from one to another. And for a lot of you guys, uh, band directors out here, choir directors, uh, elementary uh, ensembles that you might possibly want to record, Really, with this here, with this recorder here, you can do so many really cool things. Before I, before I go along, you know, what are all the things that the computer can do? What are things that you use a computer for? Research? What? Storing? Listen to music? Recording? You know, you, you can watch videos on it now. Last year was when I first heard of YouTube, and in one year is amazing what you, how YouTube exploded. I have 150 videos on YouTube now. I'm going to put this video on YouTube when I get back to Nacogdoches, so for the folks that weren't able to be here, they can still watch it and hopefully get something from this as well. So this little box can do so many things because it's ones and zeros. That's what it's doing, and it, it, can, do, it can record things, it can, you can watch movies, you can uh, do research, and Originally, when they, they started coming out with personal computers, uh, they, they thought, well, you know, I don't think we're going to put out comp personal computers. And you know what was the only reason they thought that anybody might want a personal computer in their house? This is back when computers were bigger than this room. Yeah. The only one thing they could come up with, a reason why somebody would want to have a computer in their house, was to organize recipes. That was the only thing they could, they, they could think of why anybody would want a computer in their house, is to organize recipes. And I, I'm guessing no one in here does that, really. Mm -hmm. However, you can do a search on, on Google and come up with a zillion recipes, and I guess in some ways that is kind of organized. Some basic things about Audacity. There's a record button. Play, rewind, pause, stop, fast forward. And basically, I'll start recording. And actually, because I don't feel like singing, I'll record my little friend here. And I taught, I taught elementary for a while. And at one time, I was actually pretty good at a recorder player. It stopped. And I'm not quite sure. Okay. Hopefully, it's not going to be too loud. Sure enough, but, uh, you, you guys get the gist of that. Could you hear that at least, at least, at least somewhat? Uh, and let me, let me, if I don't like that track, I can get this little edge right here, and it goes away, and I can record it again. I don't think there's any, is there any volume from that mixer? No, sir. Okay, that's fine. Well, this is, I'll play loud. And I hit the, notice when I hit the record button, it puts up the track there automatically. You can go under there and, uh, do one. Actually, I, I never probably ever do it with audio track, so you can't do that over here in the projects area. And I can make a new stereo track or audio track. Time tracks are probably going to use audio tracks for audio tracks. Right. Okay. So you guys probably all played at one point or another in your life. Pop cross games. Okay. I'm not going to hear it again. Can you turn your microphone up a little bit? <coughs> uh, no, now it's fine. Okay. <laughs> I see talk about it, I guess. I do lecture to 127 in the, in the rock history class that I have. So I usually projects, but I am in an auditorium where I actually amplifies my sound a little bit. So that does help out a great deal. Well, let me show you some cool things. Let's say this was really good. Let's say this was something that I want to take to a CD, make it to MP3, and do some other really cool things. Let's pretend I have a really long time here. I can highlight that section there and it's hit delete on the typewriter or backspace on the PC and that goes away. At the very end, I can do the same thing. Let's say that this is stuff I don't want there. I can hit delete and it goes away. 
let's say that I was doing, I want to do like a fade out. I can highlight the areas that I want, come run under effects up here, and I have a fade out. So that does a nice little fade out. You can actually see the visualization of that. If I play it from that point there, it's already already died out by that point. But that's how you, you can uh, fade in and fade out of things. You have panning over here, left, right, and you have volume over here. And what I do, this is a little trick that I, uh, that can actually make sure you record sound actually quite, uh, quite good in Audacity. So I click on this track here, and basically what I do is I make, I duplicate that track, and it's command D, and that's what I normally do, and I click on it again, and I'll make another one. So I have three tracks, and it's the same, it's a copy of the same thing I did. And this is what I do, is I take the first track original, I do a hard pan left and a hard pan right, turn the volume down, and they do it by a dB, so I have to take it down, 9 dB, 9 dB. Mixing 101 is this, if something's too quiet, either turn it up, turn everything else down, or do a little bit of both. And that's basically, mix, that's mixing 101. And I'll turn, the, I'll turn this main volume down, this is this is touch. And that should be louder now. If I want it. So that's definitely louder that way. And when you, when you put this in the car, and this is, uh, well, uh, when, I, when you put this into a car, you actually have the panning there and so forth. The one thing now is that, you know, what do they, do you, you guys know what they mix to nowadays? Uh, the, the, you know, I, I don't know how many of you guys listen to popular music, and I'm sure probably most of you guys listen to some type of popular music out there. Do you know what they mix to now? They're, they're, I heard they're going to uh, remix the Beatles albums and they're going to release them on iTunes. And you know what they're mixing for now? It used to be like in the 70s, I'm not that quite old, but you go to someone's dorm, and always be someone with a bad sound system, a big sound system, everybody comes to their dorm, listens to the records there. Big speakers, and thumping, blah, blah, blah. And now, you know what they mix to? Little iPod things. And they actually mix to it. And we have a whole generation of folks now that are used to crummy MP3 compression and not the high fidelity sound out there. And they actually are mixing for that. They actually they don't, they don't mix for the big speakers because folks don't have that. They have the little iPods to this. Uh, so it, anyways, that's how, the, the, when, I, when I do something, I, I do think about that, that left and the right hand when I, when I do some things. All right, and let's say this was awesome. What I can do now is, let's say I want to burn this to a CD. I need a file, I can have a couple options here. I can re export as a WAV file, as an MP3 file, and an Ogborbus. What's that? That's an open source compression system. Before I go on, let me ask this. Do you guys know how MP3s work, how compression works? A little bit, a little bit. When I, when I make this, if I were to say this is a WAV file, and also on Mac you see that it's AIFF file, is that that's the stereo recording, that, that has no compression in it. It's the, it's the basic, it's the, it's the standard 44.1 um, CD quality recording. What happens with MP3 is this, is that they say, all right, you know, when you hear something really high, you hear something really low, you don't hear the middle. So if that happens and this happens, let's take out that middle part because I don't because you don't hear it anyways. So they, they take that part out. And that's, that's why MP3 is what they call a lossy compression system. It loses data. You know how you take a picture with your digital camera? Uh, it's JPEG. Well, that's compressed because the full image will be in this big TIFF file. I mean, it would be this tremendous file. You fit like one picture onto your camera. So, but a JPEG actually does compression, and the, the less compression you have on it, the bigger the file is. Like you have a 2 megapixel camera, well those files are smaller than a 7 megapixel camera. Because you have, you have less compression on that, seven, you, on that 7 megapixel camera, you can put more data onto it. So that's one of the scenarios that happens with the MP3s. Like when something really high and something really low happens, you don't hear the middle, so it takes it out. It actually takes that part out. And the higher the bit rate you have on your compression system, the more closer it sounds to the CD, the more, more closer it sounds to real life. Now, if you listen to 120 kilo, kilobit uh, MP3s in your car, well, you got really know what's going on, you got people honking, you, you got other things going on, it really doesn't matter so much. However, you are listening to uh, somewhere that's built in the with, uh, with your iPod or, 
or with, the, with a good sound system, if you, if you have that anymore, you can definitely hear the artifacts in there as well. So let's say I, let's say I want to take this to I'll do an MP3 export, export, and also the cool thing I can also do selection as MP3, which is cool. That means that if I only want to take that part out, I can just say I want that only and make that an MP3 or, or export that as a wave. In this case, I'm going to the whole seven seconds of my cross buttons. All right, so it makes it down to two. That's one. And I'm going to do the title. It's called Ha. Put two teams there. And we'll save the desktop. And it gives me the, where I can put the tag, tags in there. I can put it. That's my curve. Let's put it. Time that's ever been using the same sentence. You know, I'll put 2007 here. And let's call it country. And we'll hit OK. And it's going to do its magic. And there it is. I go to my desktop. <coughs> there it is, right there. Right. So there, that's an MP3 that I made. And then I can take an iTunes. And actually, I think this is a good point right now where I'm going to get into uh, iTunes. Make sure I don't forget. No. How many folks? How many folks here have an iPod? All right. That means pretty much you're going to use iTunes anyways. Right now, you have to use iTunes and use your iPod. One thing I do find, and uh, I'm mainly a Mac person now, uh, I love OS X a great deal, but I do use PCs because most of the folks that I teach actually use uh, PCs, so I need to be the first thing as well. I do find it, that I, I choose a little bit of a resource hog on PC. Uh, what it does, it, it puts a couple things in there like iPod loader and uh, has quick time automatically open up, so it does uh, do that a bit. However, uh, it does a lot of the cool things. That I think is going to help you out a great deal. And it does it for free, and you can't beat the price of it for free. <laughs> so here's iTunes. And basically, what I can do is this I can take this track here, I can drag it into iTunes. There it is. And if I play it back, it's going to play back exactly what I put in there. Now, if I want to make a CD out of that, and let me make it work, it's. Uh, when I put it on the screen here, it's making it worse a little bit. It's changing the resolution a little bit for me on here as well. All right, if I hit plus now, if I hit this little plus button, it makes a new playlist, and I'll just call it Pop. Let's see, let's call it that. And now I can take any track I want and drag it into this playlist. Look at that playlist now. And I can hit, now here's this burn disc. Now I can burn a, a, a CD that, that easy. Yes, sir. You're still working with traditional sound systems like choir director or band would have their band off. You would want to save them as wave files and burn them traditionally. Oh, yeah, yeah, you can, you can uh, take wave files into iTunes. Will it burn them as a wave file or as an MP3? Uh, it'll burn it as a wave file. It'll burn it as a wave file. For fidelity, you'd be better off than a wave file. Right? Yes, sir, definitely. Yeah. What about the, does, does it work as well as the Windows? Does Windows Media Player burn? Um, to be honest, I, I, I haven't used it. If it burns uh, that, just use Windows Media Player. And actually, I was kind of saving this for a bit. I got, this is actually it's Mac and PC. You guys haven't seen this, I'll, just, I'll show it to you anyways. Uh, this is what they call this an Intel Mac. So it has a has a processor that's also uh, it's been using PCs, and I can run XP natively on this. So I have a Mac and a PC on. How'd you get? I have one of those two. How'd you get? Uh, there's, for eighty dollars, there's a program called Parallels, and you can uh, do that. And this is really cool here. Watch, check this out. <laughs> and now I'm in PC land. <laughs> you can't go to the straight No, ma'am. Yeah, if you have PC, you may have Nero or Roxy Creator Pro or Roxy Creator. There are some free programs you can do uh, if you don't have a CD burner, but I, I'm assuming uh, 
uh, at one point in my life, when I was used to when I was building computers, it's actually cheaper for me to build computers by hand at one point, but not anymore. Uh, if you buy a Dell system or a gateway system that has CD burn, they're going to give you some CD burning software along with it. Uh, Audacity is a free program. Yes, ma'am. All the programs are showing them free. Oh wow. Yes, ma'am. And it's similar to your sound board. Yes, ma'am. You can edit. Your... I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. Uh, okay, in a I'm not trying. No, a little bit of problem, yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Uh, can you get input? Like the other sources rather than just the USB microphone? Oh, so. what you can do is you can buy like something like a Tascam 224 or, or, or M box, and you can plug a USB in there, then you put microphones in there. Like basically, you do need some type of converter box to take that data. And I should have, I should have brought well, What if you have a sound card with like. No, you can use sound card. You can use a sound card. Okay. Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, yes, sir. If you have a sound card built into your computer, there's no place for a microphone. You can just plug the microphone into there, and that will work fine. Will this do stereo recording? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, anyways, here, here it is. I can open up Audacity and then, unfortunately, I, I was playing around this last night. I couldn't get the microphone to work uh, for for this for right now. But it's, just, it's a driver issue because it's using a built-in eyesight for the microphone. So, in any case. Get out. Yes, sir. Oh, um, at the same time? Well, if you have your have inputs going that way, yes, sir. Yeah, it won't do, uh, at least I haven't got it to go, and I'll get out of it. Can you explain to record to? Yes, sir. I'll just power it off right now. Anyways, I wanted to show you that. So if you, uh, if you, if you didn't like Mac or hated Mac, it does Mac and PC, and it's kind of cool to be able to do it. All right. Let's see. I'm going to take, and I wish we had the internet, but that's all right. I'm going to take one of my CDs. So I don't have to worry about copyright issues. And I'll, I'm going to show you how to rip a CD. Does anybody not know how to rip a CD? Okay, I'll show you how to do it. It takes one second. Put a CD into the computer. And for your elementary teachers, what you, what you get a lot of times, you want to do like rehearsal or like performance CDs, you can do one track, ex uh, I'll show you that in a second, I don't, have to, I don't have to copy, I don't have to rip the whole entire CD to be able to do what I need to do. And this is the exciting part right here. See the little light pop. And you don't like my CD. Oh, there it is. Now I'll do that. So what I can do, and let me show you about this also. When you first download iTunes, this is very, very important. It's actually under file on the PC, but on the Mac it's under iTunes, under preferences. The default, when you import, is going to be ACC, which is a good compression system. It's actually better than an MP3. But the sad thing about that is that other devices that other, other than the iPod doesn't read ACC. So what I do is to, to, to be convenient, and this actually works for you if you want to do this. You have all these options here. AFF and Wave are pretty much exactly the same thing. Mac, they call it AFF on PC, they call it Wave. iTunes put, puts both in there. They're all pretty much exactly uh, what they call Red, red Book CD compliant. I forgot the exact, all, all the things. But they, basically, they're pretty much exactly the same. And also you have the MP3. The Apple lossless encoder is actually a really cool system as well. But again, other folks can't read it. And here, listen to it outside of the iTunes. So what I recommend to, for compatibility and size is MP is MP3. So you have to do that. Let me do that one more time so you know where it's so you know where it's at. <coughs> PC is under file, Mac is under iTunes, so you do the preferences, and basically you're going to general first. You're going to dance tab. And find the importing and pick the one you want. Now let's talk about let me talk a little bit about how what bit rate to do. The higher the bit rate, at this here, at one at 320, I can't tell the difference between a CD and an MP3. Most of the time. Okay. Now those files are a lot bigger than 128 kilobit bit ones, but they're still a lot smaller than the wave ones. The other thing that I do as well, and I, I usually uh, rip at, at 192, 
is a variable bit rate. I'll explain what that is. What, what variable bit rate means is that if you have, let's say that you have this big orchestra going on, well, you, you want a lot of, you want the most of that data. But then all of a sudden, a snare drum comes in by itself. Well, you don't need all 192 kilobits for that snare drum. So what it does, it takes the parts that it doesn't need, it gets to that big, full orchestra section. And that's, what the, that's what's called a variable. Instead of being a 192 straight through, well, it's variable bit rate. Sometimes it's 192, sometimes it goes down to 73, sometimes it goes back up to 192. So it's, it's variable, and it's using the parts that it doesn't need to give the other parts to give it more, uh, less compression of that part. So it's usually <coughs> to use variable bit compression on, on it. The, I, used to, I used to mention this a couple of years ago that some of the early MP3 players didn't do very bit, but now I, every every MP3 every MP3 player you buy now is going to do variable bit rate. So go ahead and use it. I just use medium. That seems to be that seems to work best for me. So I'll just use the default medium. Uh, if you want to experiment around, you're welcome to do that. This is what I used to do: is 192 and uh, medium variable bit rate when I rip things. Now, if you wanted to, and actually I'll do, I'll, I'll just do this, I'll, I'll, I'll run this as a wave uh, file first. Let's see, turn the volume down. No, I see. Say, say I want that one particular track by itself. Well, I can click on the track, and actually I can right click on a piece on a Mac and hold down the control, and I can say convert to wave. The other way of doing it is you click there, it's under advanced, isn't it? Yeah, and convert selection to wave. All right, so I'll do that. And you see it's important. Suggestions to too much of my singing. And there it is. And if I go to the, go to the music area, there it is the WAV file. And if I, if I was on the internet, it would actually went to the database and, and put all my song titles on there. And so if you put any CD in there that's, that's a commercial CD, you, you'll be able to, someone's put the song titles on there. In this case, it doesn't. And I can, I, I can check it by seeing, uh, right click and get info, and I say, okay. Well, this is a WAV file, okay, and it says 23 megs. Just for grins, let's do this. Let me go back under the preferences, and I'm going to change it to MP3. And we'll do the, my custom one, 92 bit. Let's see what the size is. Let's see what the size is when I code that. So I'll do the same thing. This time it says, see how it changed the MP3, because now that's what it's going to rip to. It does it automatically. Whatever it is, it, you set in your preferences is what it's going to uh, export as. Not import as. Boy, this has got a lot faster than this Intel Mac. Hmm. I come back up here and I can check that one. Right click on it, get info. And now it's 3.4 megs. So you can see there's still a major you know, compression system, compression with that. But if, if I did it, and I just, let's do one, I hate to do this over and over again, we'll do it one more time. Let's do it at 320. Let's see how big that is. Back to my audio CD. And convert to MP3. So this is using more of that bit rate. So the, the fidelity should sound better. However, it's me singing and playing guitar, so 16 kilobits would probably be good enough for that. <laughs> if you were taking these and wanted to get them out of practice, you maybe you to use WAV files. Mm -hmm. not, not everybody can use MP3, so the CD players are Yes, sir. Well, what I would do is I, I would just burn it as a, as a CD and give it to them as an audio CD. Now, what you can do, with the cool thing about an MP3, because probably most of your students are going to be on the, use the internet, is that you can put it to a, a website. You can even use something like MySpace, because MySpace you can upload four MP3s if you have like a music account. And they can go there and they can download it off of MySpace and then it costs you any bandwidth. I think next year I'll, I'll submit a session on how to use all these web tools, what two apps for free. Yes, sir. Yeah, I'm just wondering if you can use the 
pardon my ignorance, is, is the only difference between burning, ripping the CD, format the same thing on the CD? What, what ripping is, is that I'm actually taking it, I'm ripping data off the CD. When I burn the CD, it's taking that stuff that I ripped and put it onto another CD. So one's taking the data off the CD, and then the other one is when I burn a CD, is I'm actually making a CD. Well, I can take this first song here and this other song here and make my own CD from that. Or I can just copy that CD potentially if I wanted to so, as well. And let's see how big that file is. Five or four megs. So today with these big hard drives, I always want to say uh, use the highest bit rate that you can, that you can use. For that. This is a two and a half minute song, so that's not, that's not too bad. Now a lot of this is because of the speed of singing with the guitar on there. Now, to what I'll title these, uh, I'll title this wave, so it's a wave by looking at it. Would the difference be bigger if you had like a more complex music in there? Like uh, possibly. Possibly. Usually what it is is that for every stereo minute of audio is uh, 10, meg, 10, 10 megs. So you have a three minute song that's stereo, it's going to be 30 meg file. Uh, with MP3 at, at 128 kilobits, it's usually one tenth or one eighth of that size. Uh, he, he asked me if, if something that was more com uh, complex uh, would have been a bigger MP3 file. Potentially, it, it may be, but gen the general rule is like when you make an audio file that's, that's a wave recording, it's, it's 10 megs for every mi serial minute, basically. So it's a three minute song, it's 30 megs. And uh, at 128 kilobits, it's usually one tenth and one eighth the size of that. So it's three megs. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to take this out of iTunes and put it there. And uh, just for friends, I'm going to take. Put it on your desktop and just drag it? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, I just, I just take the file and then just drag it. And see, I'm on Mac, you have a little plus on, on PC, maybe okay. something similar. And then load up on it. It's on my desktop. And usually I have my desktop a little bit more organized. However, uh, today, this is fine. All right, now what I can do is I'm going to go back into Audacity. One tip, uh, try to get two gigs of RAM. I only have one gig of RAM, and I think that's one, thing, one reason why this is slowing me down a little bit. So. Audacity will open up MP3 files. I do find it's faster. That it does open up WAV files faster. But this Intel Max is, is a lot faster. And now, if I wanted to, there's me playing guitar. I'm about the same. So let me show you some, some possible. Yes, sir. Okay. I've had trouble opening up WAV files in Audacity. How did you do that again? You save it to your desktop, and then the file open it. That's it. Off your yes, sir. And then you have to tell it to import. That it, does, it does automatically. Okay. Just by opening it? Yes, yes, ma'am. Yeah. Uh, if you want, I'll pull the PC up in a second and we'll, 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 it shouldn't do the same thing. So now that I got, I, got a, I got my WAV file up here, I can do some cool things with it. I got actually two WAV files, and that's kind of what I wanted to have. Is that let's say I want this first section for my song. All right, I'm going to copy that and do file copy or this is the different command. And if I want, I can make a new file. And I'll paste it there. And I got, I, uh, see how big it is? If I want to make it smaller, I can hit the little arrows there and I can make it smaller. And I can see I got a little under 30 seconds of, of music there. So if you want to make it Bigger, you do that. Let me take it. Let me take something from the other song. 
I said in the first couple, first little part of that. And this part here is a little bit harder to grab, so I'm going to expand that. And see, now I can see exactly what, what I'm highlighting with this first part right here. And that's his, that's his, that's his little number uh, with a magnifying glass there, the plus and minus. And I'm going to copy that. Sorry, sorry. With, with the left, right. And I'll paste it. And there it is. Let me do a little bit to cut a little bit of mixing. Actually, let me just do let me just do this. Because this might be actually even more beneficial. So I'll make a new stereo track. presentations and a computer messes up, people kind of like that because that way they realize that they're not the only ones that computers uh, fall apart. I'll give it in a second or two and say thing. that say that they, 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 like Greece has a couple cuss words in it, and they don't want to drop a beat. So what I do is I, I find a syllable. And the one and flip it. And flip it. And flip it. Backwards and, yeah. and the, the, because I, you can very easily go in there and take it out. But they say, well, I don't want to drop a beat while we're dancing. And um, I understand that. That's true, but they kind of want, even if something's not there, they still want to have something that's there. That makes sense. Yes, sir. You, you, there's a reverse button that's built. Your text, your text, you can just reverse. Uh, you can do that with the sound words and the presentation. Oh, wow. Awesome. I'll just do that one more time. Uh, let's say I want this first part here. I'm going to copy that. Make a new file. Paste it. And let's take, uh, I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. And minus sign. Come over here up to the end of it. Let's say I want the end of the song. Copy that. Paste it there. And what I can do is do a uh, Fade in and fade out if I wanted to, to kind of make it a little bit more. And actually, let me, let me, let me zoom in a little bit on the beats here to see what exactly what's going on. That actually wasn't too bad. Let's do a little, quick little fade in, fade out, fade out there, fade in, fade out. Yeah, you, you can get in there. I mean, you can get in there where you can't even know what's going on. So if I have this, this section here, you know, if I, even if I get like a lot smaller than that, it's not like a, yeah, it's like nothing. So it really is amazing to be able to come in here and do that. Let, let's say, let's, let's listen to me sing a little bit. I'll show you that trick that we're, let's say sweater was a bad girl. I'll say sweater was a bad girl. That word. And so let me find where it's at. So it's just the sweat. So if I were to take that part there and reverse it, you 
That might be worse. That sounds worse. <laughs> the other thing that you could do is that you could uh, put an onk in there, like a bleep in there as well. So you could do that. All right. And like you said, silence is another thing that you could do. You could just come in and silence it um, as well. I joked around when I showed the kids this in the band camp uh, that they could uh, take out the bad words of their song, or I guess they could put the bad words back in if they really wanted to. And uh, let me do one other thing. So that's basically taking two audio files and combining them together. You see how to do that. You just copy and paste one section, copy and paste another section in there. And if you want to do a fade in, fade out, you can do that. If I did a, uh, this out. There's actually a beta of uh, Audacity. I mean, that looks really cool. But what beta is, is that software that's uh, ready for prime time. So, uh, I'm using the version that's not beta. And I'm going to show you what, what DJs do. This little button right here, this is a move button, so I can move this to wherever I want to. And let's do what they call a crossfade. So I'm going to go back to my little spacer there and highlight what I want. And do a fade out. And then highlight this area here and do a fade in. And that's what DJs do all, all the time. So. So if you, if you want to do a crossfade, that's how you do a crossfade. And the, the, this is the button right here is what, what you do to move it around. Can Uh, what I do, if I want to fade more, I just highlight it again and fade it again. Is there like a percentage? I, do they have a percentage on there? They, they may be one on there, let's see. I mean, the, the, see the fade out didn't have those little, little things there, little dots. The dots, it means the little boxes come up. Uh, so that, like, if I wanted to kind of mess around with this, instead of us in the flange or anything. Stars that can't sing. A lot of compression in the course going on. I might need it actually, that probably could help me out some. Make me sound good. So, the cool thing is that with, with all this, there's so many really cool plugins that come in with it, and you can actually go download more of them, and they're open source and they're free. And the, the default ones are all the ones I normally need uh, most of the time. And you actually do got an amplify function. So, let's say, let's take it up. 16, uh, 10, 10 dB, and see how much bigger it got. So if you have like a record that's really soft, you can kind of increase the, you can amplify it that way, or you can increase it if it's too loud. And that's, a, that's always a handy feature for um, various things. Because sometimes you get a CD that, that's loud, uh, and then sometimes it's a little bit softer, and you want it to be the same volume if you're making a mixed CD. And that's one way of doing it. Another way of doing it on your uh, CD burning program, you, you have something that's called normalize. And you, if you ever with, with wonder what that was, you can go in there and hit normalize and then make it, you find a lot of things and make everything that loud or that soft, basically, and make it all the same volume size. So if you ever get a CD. Part, uh, it, it finds the, the loudest section of, of, of all the tracks, and it, it either makes it it, to be honest, I can't remember if it, if it makes everything goes up to that level or it brings everything down to the quietest point. But it makes it all the same volume level, basically. Uh, I noticed there was a, a separate uh, crossfade in and out. Is there? Wow. Yeah, on the bottom. I think it's on the effects. It's under effects. It is. I saw that too. Let's check that out. On the bottom. Uh, yeah. I, oh, I yeah. This was, this was uh, oh. Mm -hmm. Let's see what that does. I'm assuming that you need two tracks to be able to do that, so let me highlight these two tracks here where I have a crossfade and see what happens. Well, look, it must be the same similar type of thing as fade in, fade out. 
I guess that it's called. I, I don't know the difference. I'll, I'll have to play around with that. All right. Awesome. Can you be demonstrating that notepad uh, software today? Sure. Uh, how much time do I got? I was going to show one more thing in Audacity um, for. As far as getting on that, uh, a free copy of it, just to download it. Type in Audacity in Google. Uh, I have the direct link on the. Um, okay, that's, I see the link. I just want to make sure that it's just the basic of the download. Yes, sir. It's just a uh, free piece of software. I use that. I use that. Do they have any spyware attached to that stuff? No, no, no. no. <laughs> then it's the spyware. I've, I've used the, I've used the programs for years. Uh, the cool thing about open source, they don't have. They won't. I mean, you can't have spyware and release it. So like the audacity is open source. iTunes is from Apple, then I don't really put any spyware on that. And uh, Finale is notepads, not going to have any spyware either. Really you know, this is too big of a company to do that. I recorded this last night in my Motel 6. So I just been playing guitar. And what I can do now is that, and normally what I do is, I'm just going to, I won't worry about that today. Is that I'll put headphones on. That way, you won't get what's called the bleed through. So I, I, I play a guitar track in, and if I want to play a recorder on top of it, I'd have the headphones on my ears as I'm playing back to that. And this is multi track recording. Uh, today, I'm not going to worry about it. It's pretty soft anyway. So, trying to okay. I was trying to remember what key I played in last night. And on Audacity, this is the one thing under Audacity you need to do under preferences. Uh, make sure you have play other tracks while recording the new ones selected. That way, it, was, it will play back that track as you're recording as you're recording the, the other one. If you don't do that, then it won't play back that track. And for me to be able to play in time, I need to be able to hear that track. Also, this is a place where you can pick how many channels you want. And that's 16. I haven't ever used 16, but I guess you could record 16 tracks. Here. One time and stereo is probably either mono or stereo is what you want there. And this also you can pick your, I've had other devices in here that I could uh, use, I could pick the different ones. And file formats is another place that I, that I do things. Uh, one last thing on why I'm in here. When you download Audacity, you have to also download the Lane codec to export it as an MP3 file. MP3 is, uh, you have to pay a license to use MP3s. Uh, what these folks did, they got together and they decided, well, let's make our own version of MP3s, and they call it the Lane Kodak. And that's free to download. For, for whatever reasons, they can't distribute that at the same time. I, I don't know why, but they, you download it, you find the light, you find it in your library, and uh, you can just do this and then what is for? Find it and then you just click on you just click on it. L-A-M-B? Yeah. It, uh, on the website, on, on the website. Well, you Can you spell that? Yeah, uh, L-A-N-E. Uh, yeah, Lane. The Lane Kodak. And actually on the Audacity page, it says it right there. It's the second program under Audacity that you download. Uh, because it knows everyone wants to make these as MP3s as well. Also, uh, one thing uh, last night, I, uh, there actually is an Intel built for this one. I haven't downloaded it, the Intel build of this. This is the PowerPC version of it. So that might be one reason why it's acting like Tetsu on there. On my own computer, uh, this is the school's computer. On my own computer, I, I uh, 
I don't have the Intel chip in this one. So let's see. students and it is, it is love at the death because they, they do a lot of really cool things and it's a free program. And then a couple of these uh, they call mashups and do a whole bunch of really cool stuff on their own. And, uh, the other things like this before, before I go on, what, what's, some, what's some pedagogical uses that you could use this program for Audacity? Well, I've, I've used it. It wasn't Audacity. It was a free download. It's like a, a trial version kind of thing. Something called Rip and Scorch and Burn yeah. or something like that. I can't think but I used it with my guitar students, and I recorded them so they'd have a practice tape. And, and they, they did it, it wasn't just it wasn't me, that we, they actually had them kind of do it as well. So they're actually using the software and technology. And the That's awesome. You could, like, if you were trying to do testing, you could have the kids play or sing into it, <coughs> you know, record, and then you could have them all go into a practice room and record, and then you could listen to it and break. Well, how about some scenarios like this? Because uh, it's a laptop. Let's say you have UIL and the company only comes one time. But yeah. you can take this in there, yeah. record it, yeah, I've, give I've, them a CD. I've, record, I've recorded CDs. You know, give it to give it to the kids as, as a CD to go home and practice to. Uh, uh, you can do. I mean, there's so many possibilities with the, with the audio recorder. Uh, I do. I, I, I the podcast that I do. I record in Audacity. So I basically have one guy in Minnesota, one guy in Boston, me and Nacogdoches, and they emailed me their parts. I just move it around, put some music on the bottom of it, and then export MP3, put it on my website, and have a podcast. Uh, for elementary teachers, I would say, you know, what about this, reading books? Because a lot of children don't have folks, that, like parents that uh, are, are off enough or have time to, to read books to them. Well, they, you could read a book, give it to them on a CD, and then go home and listen to a book. On, on CD. So there's, there's so many options. Uh, I, I used to do this when I used to go, uh, I go 30 minutes to, to college. I used to make an audio set of, of the notes for a test and listen to the car while I drive over there. Well, today I can make an MP3, put it on my iPod, listen to it on the way to work, on the way to school that way and, and study that way. Um, I do that, I, I do dabble a little bit with uh, acting and uh, I actually uh, do that to learn lines because uh, I get scripts and I like hearing another person go back and I can respond back and forth and that's one way I learn lines for things. Yes, ma'am. So you can take a ready-made song and you, and you can, let's say you can delete verses or add, can you do all that with this? No, ma'am. You, the one thing is, is a wave file that's all combined together. Now, I can take parts, I, I can take sections out of it, uh, but like to take out the, the vocal, the, it used to be that the vocals were, were dead center pan and what you could do is that you could flip it and you can, you can negate it, but today they're not this only center dead pan. And even then, you kind of you only heard about the left side twice mm -hmm. because you flipped it and you canceled the other side out. Basically, like throwing a rock, a pebble into the water, you throw it exactly the same. You cancel out the the way you need it exactly the same way, and that's what uh, that's one way of doing it. There are programs that do it, but that's the process they're doing. And my my uh, results have been that they they're not that accurate. I get that all the time. Can I take? I want to do a karaoke version of whatever song. Um, what I would suggest to do is that, and uh, is to go find the MIDI file 
of that off the internet. And that way, that song had instruments that maybe MIDI sounds. However, you have the full version of the finale. Golly, those those record those have those sound really good, uh, and you can take it out and then you can sing on top of that. Let's see. I've taken a song that's too short off of my uh, CD sets of my own repeat music and added a verse to it by popping and pasting it on the desk. There is a there is a device called a sound scope. Oh. If you if you know if you're with that at all, but it, it has um, there's different versions of it. One version actually burns CDs, another version just plays CDs, but it does have a vocal, a vocal reduction on it. It has a tempo. Yes, yes, Anyway, it's it does those things. It can It's a device that does you can slow the tempo down, you can it's speed it up, you can change the key, and all that kind of stuff. The it's a, right. yeah. Okay, thanks. That'd be something yeah. There's so many really great technology things out there, and uh, uh, does it do a pretty decent job with it? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, awesome. It's great. Up, up to a certain percentage kind of thing, it's, yeah. it's pretty, it's, it's all deep, it's decent, but you know, you can't, once you go past, you know, 40, you know, 20, 30 percent kind of thing, it really does make a, it doesn't, it's not as good. It's, it's, you can't only use so much. This is me in my uh, hotel since last night, just playing some blues. So I, I did the guitar shuffle first, then went back and recorded the solo on the top of it. So, anyways, I just I, I love Audacity. Uh, I actually I, I'm actually a singer songwriter. I wrote a song while I was here in uh, San Antonio. I recorded a demo version of it in my uh, hotel room. So that way, when I go back to that, I can go back and record. It. Uh, so it, it, it really is quite amazing. All right, and I've got about. 15 minutes left, all right? Let's finish up with notepad. Any other questions on uh, uh, Audacity, sir? Um, would the, the compression spread out, will that play a song back slower at slower tempo and keep, I mean, can you, can you make that program take a recording and slow it down yes. and keep the same, the oh, same key? Same key, ooh. But slow? There are there are plugins for some like soundboards and other ones. I've seen that. I don't know. I haven't done that in Audacity. I, there may be a plugin for it. I, I don't know. I, I can definitely slow it down a half step, up a half step. I've done that. It does. It does, it does, it does key, change the key. Because what you do a lot of times, you get the, what's called a Munchkin effect, or you get this artifact in the wall, wall, wall. Just take it down too low, and the Munchkin effect it's really high up. Uh, but there are there are some plugins for uh, some of those. Yes, there's a program called um, Tractor. It's a DJ program where you can go down the song. What is that? Tractor. 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 It is. Yeah, and TRA cable. I think I have actually used that program at one point. I think it was a demo version. They did the first track off of the CD. Yes, you can um, slow down the song, but it's the same. I won't spend a, a, a ton of time on Notepad because actually it's pretty easy to use. And basically, when you open it up, this little wizard pops up, and I can say, "All right, I'm going to do a song, and I'm the composer. I probably want a letter. I hit next." And here is a little wizard of what's instruments. And so I play piano. I'll put that there. And let's say I want to do like a song also. So I'm going to do chorus. I'm going to do voice. I'll do add. And let's say that for some reason I want the piano on top, I can put that little track there and it make it go up, or vice versa, I can make it go down. I can add more instruments if I wanted to. Let's say I want to add the violin to it. You show me the percussion part. The percussion isn't isn't great. Uh, is there a particular percussion you want? Uh, drum set. Tra uh, okay, drum set. Okay. Yeah. And that's gonna be an awesome piece there. Uh, key, you guys know what keys. And if you don't know your major or minor keys, that they can help you also. So, three flats is <coughs> minor or three flat major. Let's keep it in, uh, we'll just keep it C. The time signatures, you're restricted, a notepad, you're only restricted to these particular times. So I'll just do four, four, four right now. And it doesn't give you an option for a pickup. 
uh, on the on notepad. Finale, of course, you have that option. Uh, what I would recommend also, if you need, if you don't need Finale, but you need something that has a little more oomph than Notepad, uh, print music is eighty dollars, seventy nine dollars, something like that. As educated, I think you might even get it for thirty nine dollars for, for education educational price, and it's a uh, so it doesn't do everything Finale does, but let's, let's face it, most of you guys don't need everything Finale does. Uh, it records the MIDI, it, it does export MIDI files in and out. Uh, it does, I forgot, was it, is it 30, 48 uh, staffs? <coughs> so that, that's usually enough for most people. I mean, I can write a symphony with that. You know, that's, not a, that's not a problem at all with that. So once the program's up, is that basically what you can do is, you know, this the, the Simple ways. I click on a note that I want, and I put it there. And if I want an eighth note, pick on the duration that I want. And this is what they call the point-click method, which is the slowest way of inputting data. Under Window is the rest palette. They use it as a pop-up for me. On PC, it looks a little bit different, uh, but it's. Say I want to do a half rest for the beginning of the next one. And I'll do a half note. Okay, and, and so forth. Yeah, so I, I can put it that way. That's the slowest way. And that's the way I, I almost never put in notes anymore. Notes now. Because Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Notepad, there's only two ways to put NAS. That was the first way, is, is the uh, point and click method. This is a speedy note entry type method. And what you do is you pick, you use the arrows of open down and say, I want that G there. I hit return, and I'm going to hit my notepad real quick here. Then I can change the durations by hitting various numbers. And see how the durations are changing to different things? Let's say I want eight notes. Well, what, what, uh, what eight notes are is four on the track on a typewriter pad, a number pad that we have on those keyboards. And let's say I want to do a, I want to walk down from that. Hit return. And you can get pretty good, pretty fast at doing this. So I'm a little bit slow right now because I'm used to, I'm used to having a track pad, I mean, number pad here, but I don't, I don't, I don't have that so much right here. Yeah, I have I have a pseudo number pad on here. Oh. Uh, I hit this number lock thing, and it's it's using the U, I, and, and O keys, and it's throwing me off a little bit. Yes, sir. Uh, I, I and, and so forth. And I want to rewind, and it plays a bad. No pad, pad transposition. Uh, it transposes. Oh, that's fine. Yes, ma'am. It transposes. Is there even a concert pitch on here? I think there's a concert pitch. Yeah, I can display a concert pitch. Everything's a concert pitch here, though. So that's the, that's the easiest way of, uh, that's the way I input data. And actually, uh, forever, I wanted many to have everything. I want to play, because I play piano, and I put it in there. Honestly, I can put notes faster in here. And let me show you a couple other really cool things that you can do uh, with this. Let's say that, well, I, I guess I can do it. I'll do it on piano. I'll take a chord. And Kind of set up for the student to learn. Um, does have like the Finale has video, you know, to show you. There's one thing that's almost as good. As, well, there's there something down here I want to show you. I can show you right now. Is that when you when you download a Notepad, you have, there's actually the Notepad exercise tutorial, and if you go through these 11 pages, okay. you're going to know how to use Notepad very well. Yes, so, so in some ways, you know, I like video, I like audio. A lot of times, just sitting there and doing everything. I took one computer class in college. That's it. And I'm a music technology guy at the university. So all the college classes that I took were for other things. I learned the reason why I'm doing tech is because I sat down there and hacked into my own and whatnot. And in some ways, I think it's actually more beneficial than watching a video because a lot of times these videos, and you got, what? One reason why I'm, I'm videotaping this and put this on the internet, like so that they might want to go back and watch it again or hear something that they might have missed the first time, you can go back and watch it and whatnot. 
Uh, however, I th this is a great way of, uh, how do I use Notepad? Right here, this is what I used. This is a really cool feature that uh, came out in, I think, 2004, is that I have that there. Let's say I want to build a triad. Well, I hit three, it makes another third, do another three, it makes a, it just then stacks thirds. And return. So let's say I want to do something kind of, uh, what I, I paid $20,000 to, to learn how to do. Uh, let's do portal harmony. I learned how to write all this music that nobody wants to, wants to hear. I wrote a serial band piece. Nobody wants to play the serial band piece. And this is good. I know how to write serial music really well. Nobody, it's, uh, nobody wants to play my serial music. Oh, well. But anyways, if I would have had this back in college, I could have done a lot of really cool things because I could have just been, I went fifth. There we go. Very easy. I just hit five up there. So I could do, you know, if you want to do crazy stuff like seconds, and then I go above. It's, it's the last previous one on, on top of that, so we'll go third, third. So that's, what, that, that's the way that you can input things pretty quickly that way with stacking chords. And that's a really cool, uh, that's a really cool feature that I love as well. Most of you guys probably know this, and, and one thing I actually like about Notepad over Finale is that Finale just has so many buttons. It's really, it's not friendly to the eye. And I think it ever get done with this many buttons on Finale and have it have the same functionality, that's where my home penny should be at. Uh, I, I showed this program for the Bandcamp, and they are able to make pieces. And I, what I used to tell them to do is, like, you know you're clarinet, you play clarinet or flute or whatever instrument, write something for your instrument. And they're able to make little duets. Uh, I've even had people do quartets uh, in a, a span of four days in there, and it's really amazing. They go out and they're so excited about it. Having everybody play it, go home and take it, and show their folks, and they, that's what they did in band camp. If I want to do a crescendo and diminishing window, click where the points at and drag. Click on the note. I'm sorry, this, this, this thing's right here is messing with my mouse. I'm not trying to give an excuse, but there's an excuse for me. Man, that was pretty hard. Will this program accept like input from an instrument? No, sir. This, the notepad won't do that. That's print music or finale. Finale, you know, without the uh, education price, is like $500. You can get educators, you can get $230. And uh, print music's like, this for $99. I think you get it either for $79 or $39 as educators. And, that's a program I would recommend that, that pretty much anybody, I can use, I'm a composer. I, I can use notepad, I mean, sorry, sorry, print music for everything uh, that I do pretty much. And it's a lot more economical than, uh, it's kind of like Photoshop versus Photoshop elements. Most people don't need all the full Photoshop stuff, uh, but they got to have it because it's Photoshop. Uh, Photoshop elements is, is more than enough for most folks. All right, and then uh, the other cool thing is the lyrics, of course, you hit on this little, there to let me hover over it. It tells you what it is. It's what it's on. And if you haven't seen this before, this is actually pretty cool. You click right on the right on there, and you start typing. I hit the space bar, it jumps to the next note. And um, so half. Now I do a hybrid. It jumps to the next. Note. Next letter. So this is how you put uh, t uh, lyrics in for your uh, choir, or you want to put some lyrics in for your songs. I'm almost out of time, boys and girls. One last thing on here, uh, I actually like this a lot. You need a playback. Obviously, you can't do lyrics. You need playback. It won't playback the lyrics. No, yeah, so I can go through here and put in uh, accents. And that's, that's the toolbar for that. If you do now, to make tests and whatnot, I mean, they got their really cool, you know, uh, templates and whatnot. Well, back in the old days, I used to make my my handouts myself, and you know, this text tool, and I could just, you know, test one, you know, and type in whatever I want to type in for them to do, and just move that around to any place I want to put it. So you can use Notepad to make. Uh, Give out tests and whatnot, make skill sheets with it. 
so forth. Anything else on the major? Oh, if you want to race something, you, there's the racer there. Right here. And to move things around, let's say that this was a, I want to oh no, copy this. I hit this tool right here. That's the mass edit tool. And I hold on shift, and then I drag it to the place I want it. So they have to make a copy of it. It says how many, you know, drag it that way, say five times, and make copies of that. Boy, I can't believe that much time and what has gone by. Well, any other questions? That's for now. Like, okay. My biggest advice for anybody that really wants to get into it is honestly open up this pro, this this is notepad simple entry training exercise. Go through all the pages of it. it. Takes you about 20 minutes. I do know how to use notepad. What was that? On? Oh, like uh, if, if you, it's, it's in the folder. That you, it's, it's in the folder that you download. When, when you open up the finale notepad, yeah. it's going to be uh, that one right there. Notepad exercise. Does that not have one? Does not. No, and that's why that's why I'm doing this session. Okay. I, hope I, I will I will throw this on the uh, on the YouTube and G, uh, Google video if you wanted to see it again. The one I did last year, which is almost the same amount of stuff, is up there right now. So if you go home right now, type my name, Herbert Mitchell, into uh, YouTube, or uh, I think Herbert Mitchell, T M E A, into YouTube, uh, it'll probably pop up. Actually, not, yeah, it was on YouTube. It, it, that is a Google video for sure. I'm getting confused a little bit. But in any case, I really appreciate you guys' time and and so forth. And thank you so much for giving me a couple more hours and a long day. Yeah. Thank you.